Hey everyone, here I am with the Uphone X or the, is it Uphone or Uliphone? I don't know. So I've did the unboxing already, please refer to that video below if you want to check out what's in the box etc. But in this video what I want to do is just tell you more about the phone and just give you my thoughts on the phone after using it for around a week. So this has been my main phone for a week. It has, you know, my SIM cards in there, I've been using WhatsApp and text messages and all these other things. Everything that you would use with a phone on a daily basis, I've been using it through this. So before I talk about the design and performance and all these different things, I just want to quickly jump over to the website and just give you a quick overview of the main features of this phone. So this is the Yule Phone X. I'm going to call it the Yule Phone from now on. And I bought it here. I bought it from Banggood and... I got it for around £115 at the time. So it's went up slightly, um, but I got a little bit of cash back, then I got hurt by import tax. For me, you know, total price was under, under £120. So it is a very cheap phone. So please do bear that in mind for the rest of this video. You know, when I'm talking about this phone is that this is a cheap phone. I didn't spend 800 or or 1000 on it. I spent 120 it might look like an iPhone X, but you can get about eight or nine iPhone Xs for the price, uh, eight or nine new phone Xs for the price of one iPhone X. So, um, yeah, bear that in mind, guys. Price is important. You know, you spend less money, you get, you know, weaker performance. That is to be expected. So let's jump back and just look at the features. Um, it's using the MT, the MediaTek 6783 CPU, which is eight core. It's got a 16 megapixel and 5 megapixel dual camera on the back. At the front is a 5 megapixels, I believe. It's got wireless charging. This is a feature I haven't used myself, but this is the reason why it's got a glass panel at the back. 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage. It also has a micro SD slot. This has got Android 8.1, something which my HTC phone from last year doesn't have. And it's got dual 4G. And, you know, as far as dual 4G goes, I've, I've found it to be okay. So, yeah, you can see the, the main features here. It talks about it all. 256 gigabytes in the micro SD card. 3300 milliamp battery. Wireless charging, which unfortunately I've not been able to test yet. Um, there's the camera. 16.5 megapixels f2.2. Oh, it's 30 megapixels. I, I do apologize. It's been it's been a week since I've checked the features. So the front camera is 30 megapixels, not five. I do apologize. Uh, and the front camera has f2.4. Advanced hi-fi chipset and box speaker. Now these are all this is all sales talk, you know, as far as what it's got. Um I have used, you know, everything. I've used this, I've used it for satellite navigation. I actually thought it was okay. Been using it with 4G. That's been okay. A little bit slower to to change to 4G sometimes. Um, compared to my other phone, but it's a you know it's got a slower CPU. It's a cheaper phone, and you can see that it's available in black and white. So just quickly talk about the specifications. Um, so there it's there. You know, just going over everything that we said before. The 5.85 inch screen. The resolution is 720p. And anything else mixed there? Auto HDR response speed. Yeah, so that's you know I'll refer to this um I'll refer to this in the in the description area and you can um I'll just uh you can check out all these features out for yourself and you know see what it's got and what it doesn't have. So back to the phone itself. Now this is a 720 screen and you have to talk about this screen because it has this large notch at the front. Uh, as far as the screen goes, I'm happy with this re resolution. I really am. I mean, I've had a higher resolution phone. I've had, you know, 1080p, 1440p screens in the past. But day to day, you really don't notice it being 720p. The, the pixels per inch is fine, in my in my opinion. Um, as far as the display goes, one thing I would say, in my HTC uh, U11, and this was a £600 phone just a year ago, in the daylight, this thing is horrific. You really can't see anything on the phone, like... Nothing, absolutely nothing. It's just the way this phone is designed. It just, you know, it just doesn't um, display well when you're when you're in the sunlight. This one actually is actually pretty good. Um, and look at that, you can see there. Like I don't have the brightness up high. It's a really really bright screen, so that's pretty good. So, uh, in fact, I'll put that up a little bit because that's quite. Um, 
little bit higher. Come on, a little bit higher. Hey, right, so that's not responding there for whatever reason. There we go. Um, now, you may have noticed what I did there. Is, this sounds like a silly thing. It's probably obvious to a lot of people that have got a phone with a notch. Um, but one thing I did notice is that, you know, when you bring down the app drawer, you know, when you bring back your notifications from the top, see how I'm at the left-hand side there? I have found myself sometimes doing this because, you know, naturally when you're using any other phone, you can pull notifications down from the top. And this is where your finger would naturally gravitate towards, you know, it would naturally go to the middle of the phone. But in this phone, you need to use the left and the right. It's it's a little bit annoying, I'll be honest, it's a little bit annoying, but I'm, I'm still getting used to it. Um, but I do kind of naturally gravitate towards the middle simply because I'm used to using other Android phones that don't have that notch. Um, and if I show you, this is, this phone's, I'll put, um, in fact, I'll put this one in airplane mode so you don't get a million notifications. But you can just see, you know, like that in the middle of the phone. It's not an issue. That's how it's supposed to be. So you need to go like that, left and right. Um, I'm happy with the display though. I, th I think it is good. As far as the overall design of the phone, it's uh, it's nice. It's really nice. I really like the back of the phone. Uh, I mean, glass is always, you know, there's always a chance it's going to smash, but I love the, the placement of the fingerprint sensor. Uh, and the fingerprint sensor, you know, I've seen websites they compare the speed of fingerprint sensors, but as far as I'm concerned, it loads quick enough for me. You know, no problem there, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so I, I like the, the dual camera, the you know, call it uh, inspired by an iPhone, call it what what you want, call it a copy. But I like the way that they've done this. It looks really nice. It's a really nice design. It really is. And, you know, silver all the way around. So you've got the speakers at the bottom there. They kind of mainly come through this one speaker. You've got the USB charging port. Um, the mic is down there as well. And at the top, you've got a headphone jack. So we'll load this up. Um, okay, so to talk briefly about those things, um, as far as the mic goes, it's fine. You know, I've been using this for calls. I've been speaking to people on speakerphone and all that. All that's fine. I do find when I'm actually using the phone and holding it up, I do sometimes put my finger down here. And this is the only position of the mic, so it's a little bit annoying. I've, you know, I've been in a conversation with someone and they'll say, where are you, where are you? I'm like, oops, and my finger was kind of, you know, just over the mic position. Um, some other phones have a mic down there, but they also have a mic somewhere else because they know that it can be covered and this one doesn't. Um, as far as speakers go, got a copyright song. Um, the music is coming from there, mainly. You know, that doesn't stop anything. I honestly don't think that one is doing anything. It's just by design, I think. I think it's trying to hide the fact it's a single, you know, or maybe not, I don't know. But I know that when you put your finger over that, nothing changes, so that doesn't seem to really be doing anything. Um, um, it has a headphone jack, and the first headphones that I tried with it, it only came through one, it only came through one uh, earphone, but thankfully it turned out that it was okay, and it was the earphones that were broke. Um, yeah. You know, as far as the audio goes, obviously you guys can't hear this, but as far as the audio goes from the headphone jack, it's not going to set the world ablaze. It's, you know, it's not doesn't have like Bose stereo quality, but it's acceptable. It's okay. It's loud enough. It's fine. You know, it's, you know, if you're an audiophile, you probably wouldn't be looking at a phone like this anyway. Um, as far as the design goes, um, oh, sorry, I forgot to point out the SIM card slot there, but you saw that, um, you saw that in the unboxing. Um, as far as the design goes, the one one of the biggest complaints I have about this is this thing is slippy as a mother. This is slippy. This is a very slippy phone. Um, I wish I bought a case for this. Um, it looks fine there, but you can see, you know, I haven't dropped the phone at all, but it's so slippy. There's been a few times where I've like sat on the couch and it's just started kind of falling down. Um, it just has zero grip. I mean, this thing is the slidiest thing ever. Um, as far as the screen goes, it, it came with a screen protector that, uh, applied. There's another one in the box. I've noticed a little mark there, and I, I haven't dropped it, so I don't know if this is maybe just taking a little knock or something off my keys, or I don't know. I think it's. I'm hoping it's just a screen protector, but there's a little mark there. 
I'm hoping it's not any damage. I don't think it is. Um, but as far as damage goes, well, you guys have known, you know, anyone who's watched my other videos of this phone will know that this phone actually came damaged. Um, so, yes, this phone is damaged. It was sent to me damaged. Um, and if I turn this around... You know, I've explained this already um, in a video, but essentially what this has is, you know, it's got blemishes. It's got, like, black blemishes. Um, and you can rub it. You can rub it like that. It's not showing so well just now because of how close the, the camera is. But if you if you rub it like that, it's, it's nothing to do with it being cleaned. But when you record a video, when you take a photo, there's a black mark there and down the bottom. And um, you can you can kind of see it. If I catch it in the right light, you may be able to see that. But, you know... If you check out my other videos, you'll see that. You'll see what's going on there and why that what the damage is. Um, so I have an ongoing dispute with Banggood. Uh, I raised a PayPal dispute. It's still ongoing. They, they asked me to send me the cost of returning it to China. So I sent them the cost and all that. And I've not replied in three days. So yeah, it's in PayPal's hands right now. I don't know if this is an issue that... I, I doubt this is... I very highly doubt this is an issue that anyone else has got. I reckon, you know, I've just been unlucky as far as the front camera you know, having a problem. If you watch my other videos, you'll, you'll know that my suspicion is that there's a tiny blemish or two tiny blemishes or marks or something before this top glass was put down. So I'm guessing that's what happened, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's unacceptable. You know, that's why I'm returning it, but I don't think anyone else who buys this phone will get that problem. But perhaps that is an indication of, you know, a, a rush phone of poor manufacturing. I don't know. Um, you can draw your own conclusions. But uh, I, I would, if you want my overall opinion of this, I think it's a good phone. I think it's a decent phone. Very good phone for the price. But it is flawed in some areas. You know, I talked about the, the glass there. Um, now, as far as using it, though, if I bring up here, you know, this is a BBC website. You just click on different articles you can see you know there's no problem with you know browsing or you know navigating using the phone as far as performance goes this is actually a fast phone to use i really haven't experienced any major problems with using this phone um as far as speed and performance and things like that um i'll, I'll show you in a bit i'll show you some gaming in a while and i'll show you what it's like for gaming but the main problem that I've had is typing. You know, if you if I go there, I just find that when I'm typing on this, in comparison to my HTC phone that I'm used to, um, I make a lot of mistakes. So I'm making a lot of mistakes when I'm typing that I don't normally make. And it just seems that when you're typing, like if I say, you know, I type in the camera is black. The camera is black. This is going to... I see it. So I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, trying to exaggerate uh, the problem. It's kind of hard to represent this when I'm doing this behind a camera and behind a microphone. Um, but my overall experience of this is that when I'm typing, when I'm, um, you know, on WhatsApp and text messages, browsing the web or whatever, when I'm writing messages, I do tend to make a lot more mistakes. Now, I'm not sure if that's the top glass or the build of the phone. My suspicion, it's nothing to do with that. It's just the CPU. This is a budget CPU. It's a budget phone. And, you know, if I go back and I, you know, whenever my mom has the original Motorola G, the Moto G, and when I go back, I'm so frustrated with how slow the thing is. And, you know, I suspect the same uh, issue is here as far as speed and performance and all that. Um, yeah, it, it's a little bit slow. Compared to a flagship phone, it's a little bit slow. And that's the thing, you know, I don't notice it browsing. I don't know noticing, uh, I'm not notice, noticing it switching apps. I'm not noticing it watching videos or anything like that. Um, you know, and, and with regards to videos, as I was playing there, um, you know, I talked about the, the audio quality of uh, the, the headphone jack being okay. Speakers, again, not the best on the market, but more than acceptable, definitely more, expect, uh, more than acceptable, loud enough. If, you know, again, back to a budget phone. Um, but all those things, you know, the problem with the camera, you know, that's a, that's a real big pain as far as the blemishes on it. But the main thing, the, really the biggest criticism that I've had, uh, apart from being a little bit slippy, is the fact that when you're typing, it just doesn't seem as responsive. And I think that is where, I don't know if it's a CPU, I don't know if it's a glass, I don't know if it's a software, I don't know. But it is what it is. So, on the subject of software, 
Um, I can't fault it. You know, it's got Android 8.1, very, very minimal. I believe there was maybe two apps that they added, I believe. And I say that because, see, I don't remember ever installing that one. But I'll show you just now. Um, oops, there you go, uninstall. So I think there was two apps in installed and you can remove them. And you can't do that on a lot of other phones. You know, HTC, Samsung, all these other phones, they add a lot of apps that you can't remove. All you can do is disable them and you can disable them and force a stop, but you can't remove them without rooting your phone. This is... You know, it's not stock Android, you know, but as far as bloatware goes, it's very, very minimal. Very, very minimal. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it um, as far as the interface and that goes. It's, I mean, it's Android. It's Android, so you're not going to have any problems with that. Um, when we're here, you can see the battery, and I'm going to talk about that in a second as well. Um, but as far as the user interface goes here, yeah. Yeah. It's Android, you know, the, the the skin isn't too overbearing, they haven't changed too many things. They've added a few little things, you can see their Dura Speed. Uh, Dura Speed helps boost the foreground app by restricting background apps. So there's a couple of little things there, like that, in Intelligent Assist. Um, you know, you can do like three fingers down for taking a screenshot, all these kind of things. So there's a lot of little things like that, but if you're used to Android, you will know what this is all about. You'll know... Um, what this has got and what it can do. Is that too bright there? Is that too bright? I'll bring it down a little bit. Uh, I've decided not to show my um, big lights today because they, they can be a little bit reflective. Um, so I'll bring this camera up a little bit. So user interface, fine. Navigation, fine. Um, everything's fine. But it is, it really is fine. It really is acceptable for, for a phone. I really, you know, navigating things like that, you don't notice any major difference in speed compared to a flagship. At least I don't. Um, apart from the typing, I don't notice any differences in performance. So in that regard, yeah, very, 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 very happy. So as I touched upon there, battery. So battery, I've been quite impressed. Um, now, I am coming from a phone that admittedly got killed with the Android 8.0 update and the battery life is terrible in that phone now. But I've been happy with this with this battery life. You know, it's got a 33 milliamp battery and there's always the risk when buying a phone from China that, you know, perhaps it doesn't have a good quality of battery. Maybe they're lying about what the actual battery is. But battery life does seem to be very acceptable. If I'm not sitting watching videos or playing games in this all day, I'll get a full day's charge, maybe even a day or so. Um, and, you know, you can see it's, I try, I don't, this is something, you know, as far as battery usage and, and monitoring this, this isn't something I test too much as far as, you know, I don't use, you know, if, if you look at a tech website, for example, that reviews a phone in depth, they will put on a YouTube video and sit for five hours till it dies and put on browsing and play for five hours until it dies. Quite frankly, I don't have time to spend three days testing that for a, a phone like this. I really don't. Uh, so I apologize. But my opinion, if you're not using videos, if you're not, you know, playing lots of games, you're only using it for texting and things like that, you probably get a day and a half, I believe. Um, but I'm not charging it a lot, which is a good thing because one of the things that's annoying about this is that the charging is quite slow. So I got sent an American ad uh, adapter and obviously I'm in the UK. Um, and if you look here, you see, is that going to come in? I think because the phone's there, it's not focusing. Yeah, so you can see there, it says output 5 volts, 1,500 milliamps. Now, I'm not getting 1,500 milliamps. I tend to be getting around the 900 to 1,000 milliamps. So this, you know, this adapter uh, can do much more. Uh, it can do much more than what's actually, you know, coming through. So I've got a little charger here. Um... Evil pointed out, I think it was Evil that pointed out that um, MediaTek have their own charging system. Um, but I'm going to use the quick uh, quick charge. It's a quick charge charger. And if I put on Ampere, you'll be, able, you'll be able to see what the charging speed is like. So, um, this is micro B, by the way. This isn't type C. This is micro B, so you need to get it the right way. A little bit annoying going back to micro B, but there you go.
So measuring just now, and I, you know, I, I think under 50 percent it charges a little bit faster, but even below 50 percent, I'm getting around the 900 1000 mark. Last time I tr I, I checked anyway. So you can see there, 1,010 milliamps. Now, it isn't the slowest charging phone in the world. It certainly isn't. But when you're used to quick, you know, quick charge 3.0 or 4.0 or anything like that, and then you go to a phone that doesn't support that, or at least, you know, doesn't give you the same speeds, it doesn't give you like the 2,000 milliamp or 2,500 milliamps that a lot of new phones are giving you, it is a little bit annoying. You know, it is taking longer to charge and it is a little bit frustrating. Offset a little bit by the good battery life, but yeah if you if you're used to something like a, a one plus or something like that with really fast charging going back to this is a little bit annoying but again back to my original point this is a budget phone bear that in mind now here's one little thing that is annoying um i'll show you something just now so this is a uh, the official usb cable and it's bending already after a week this thing is bending already and I don't suspect this is going to last much longer. I mean, it's bending already. I haven't been abusing it. I always try and look after my equipment, but it's just a very cheap USB cable. And that was one of the concerns I had with the charging. You know, I've been trying lots of different micro, uh, micro B cables. This is one from Anchor. And this came with, uh, you know, I bought this for fast charging with, um, for, um, for power banks and things like that. So this is a good cable. It's designed to be to do fast charging. But you'll notice here, look. You notice that? So what's going on there? Well, if you look at the two cables here, this is the cheap one that was provided. This is an Anchor Micro B, a standard Micro B cable. And look at that. Not sure if that's coming through. But the camera always focuses on the phone when it's there. Um, you see that? So it's maybe not apparent there, maybe not in that shot, but the it's a little bit longer, a little bit longer. Now the frustrating part about that is that if you don't have a very long micro USB cable like that, you know, it's not going to work. It's not going to charge. So a lot of your existing micro B charging cables, you know, isn't going to work. And the one they provide is bloody awful as far as quality goes you know that's not going to last it's bending already so that is frustrating that's definitely frustrating i'm sure there are other cables out there that I can buy that have this kind of longer port out there you know i'd say it's about maybe a third longer you know and it's just maybe just a few millimeters but it's enough for this one the the anchor one not to be able to even connect. So I've got like a I've got several good micro B cables and I've not been able to actually use them with this to see how it worked. So that is a little bit disappointing. And you know it's just it's just little things when you buy a cheap phone. This is you know the little things that you need to deal with. They threw in a cheap cable. I wish they gave a better you know a better quality one. But that being said, you know I've had official cables from you know HTC and other companies and after you know, a couple of months, they are dead. You know, you really, they really should be putting in a uh, braided style cable cables like, um, like that, but they don't do that. They don't put in good quality ones. Um, right. Camera. The camera is an important, uh, feature of any phone and it is probably the worst feature of this phone, but it's bad, but maybe not as bad as everyone makes out. Now, I'll refer you back to my video samples of uh, the front camera and the rear camera. In daylight, it's acceptable. At night time, it's awful. It's, re it's, it's really bad. Um, and you saw that in the video samples. In photos, it's a little bit better. If I find some photos I took yesterday. So I was away uh, looking at cars yesterday. I bought a new car. Um, so these are some of the cars. Uh, you know, I was kind of just looking around. Um, and it's not the best photo in the world, but, you know, in daylight, if you want a quick snap, if you want to just send a photo to a friend or something like that, um, it's acceptable. In nighttime, these photos would be a lot worse. Um, but yeah, it's acceptable. It really is. It's acceptable. I, I, I know I'm using that word over and over again, but what do you expect, guys? Going back to my point again, this is a cheap-ass phone. It's a cheap-ass phone. Um, 
And if you're, you know, you're worrying about um, having the best camera on a phone, this isn't for you. So as far as the actual app goes, you know, it's actually pretty good as far as, you know, it's got a lot of different features here. Picture size, you can change that. Mute camera, touch screen to take a photo. Self timer, ZS, ZSD grid line, anti flicker. Video quality, you can change to 720p. Quite minimal as far as what you can do there, but there's, there's a few different options here. Um, and you can see here it's got face beauty, SLR. Um, so there's like face slit. In fact, I'll put that in selfie mode so you can at least see something. Um, you just see my head bobbing over the side there. Um, just this face beauty, waiting. There we go. Hello. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of different options like that. You know, adding face beauty and things like that. Now, one of my annoyances is that if you're on video and then you switch, it goes back to photo. So you're on video and you're like, oh, I want to change it from the back camera to the front camera. You switch it and it changes the photo and you need to go back to video. It's just a, it's a minor thing, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit annoying. But at the end of the day, guys, you know, this is Android. There are a huge amount of different applications out there. You can download, you know, there's an example, there's Open Camera, much better application. I use that for videos all the time. And Open Camera is a much better option. Um, you're not going to have any problems with that. So if you don't like the default camera app, and I don't, then you can turn to a solution like this. So don't fret too much over the camera app, you know, having a couple of little things that maybe you don't like. Um, as I said, you know, this is a budget phone. If, if a camera is your priority, you probably wouldn't be buying this phone. In the daytime, it's okay. Nighttime, forget about it. So um, let's let's look at some games here. So I'm going to show you. I'll, I'll put on put Modern Combat. So unfortunately, I can't show you Modern Combat. It's saying failed to connect. I didn't get that problem before when I was trying things out. The internet is connected. There's no problems here. So I think it is a problem on their end. So let's try a different game. Let's try Mario Run, and this should be a little bit better. Okay, so this is Mario Run, not a not a big complicated game, not a, you know a very um, not a game that that requires a lot of resources either. Um, um, I was hoping to show you Modern Combat simply because it's. A, a, a game that pushes, a game that pushes, um, it pushes the, the the actual phone. It pushes it more. It requires more resources, and for whatever reason, it wasn't available there. But if I can maybe download Dan the Man or something like that, um, is that installed right now? There we go. Um, but from a gaming point of view, from a gaming point of view, this might struggle with the top games. Now, I played Modern Combat. I didn't have any major issues with it. I didn't experience any slowdown. But there might be some other games out there, maybe some driving games. Um, what am I say? I'm going to say... I'm... Um, there might be some games out there that struggle. But see if a little puzzle game, see if a little basic platformers and all that. I really haven't had any problems with this at all. The only problem I've had is launching Modern Combat when I'm trying to show you... Um, what it's like to play. So I've shown this game a few times. I think it's a fun little game uh, to show what a, uh, what a phone can do. Give me a fight. So, I mean, from here, you can hear the audio seems okay. Um, The audio's okay, the colours are okay, you know, this is the thing, it's a 720p screen, but that's fine for, for you know, for things like this. Um, I'm trying to make sure I, I, I show you this without dying. Dead. Modern Combat continues to be annoying, so I'm going to show you another game. I'm going to install Real Racing 3, and we'll see how we get on with that. So my backup for Modern Combat, to show you what this can do, is Real Racing 3. Um, so this is a very popular driving game. 
tilt your device to see your left. It's making me do lots of things here. I'm tilting right. There we go. Just focus on steering now. Right. So, this is the first time I've played this on this phone. And you can see there, when I put my finger there, it's going over the speaker a little bit. Um, so I kind of need to hold it like that, because if you do that, you know, it's, it's going to go over. Cut across here, that's okay, isn't it? Is that allowed? It should be alright. Um, as you can see, guys, it handles well. You know, it, it, it's fine. I'm not having any major problems with it, as far as performance goes with games. Now, my, you know, as I said, my suspicion is that maybe there's some games out there in the market that would that really push phones to the uh, to breaking point, and maybe those games would, you know, with the this, those games would struggle on this machine. But this game, Modern Combat, they all seem good. I know I've not shown you Modern Combat, but those games all seem good. And yeah, so I ha I can't. Re I really don't have any complaints about this from a performance point of view. As I said, the the, the major problem that I have. Um, you know, as far as speed, as far as performance goes, is typing. That's the only area that I, you know, really saw from a performance point of view that's really um, annoyed me. So, um, let's see, storage there. So, yeah, overall, very, very happy with it. Um, I was, what I'm going to look for actually is RAM. Can I see a look at memory? So the one last thing that I wanted to show you there was just to show you the RAM and show you how much RAM was getting used. But for the life of me, I cannot find it. So I do apologize. Um, but I will show you that this is using Android 8.1, if you see there. So that's all good. So I'll put on airplane mode for a second. So any more notifications. Okay. So. I'll give you my overall thoughts on this and hit my microphone. So you can see the, the specifications here back with the fingerprint, a uh, fingerprint reader, four gigabyte of RAM, which I can't validate right now, 3300 milliamp battery, 720p screen, cameras, etc. Um, what's my overall thoughts on the U Phone X? What's my overall thoughts? My overall thoughts are, I think it's a good purchase. I do think it's a good purchase. If you bear in mind the price, I paid under 120 pounds for this to be delivered to the UK. If you know, uh, and I saw you know, Evil pointed out that the Redmi is a better option, but the Redmi and a few other different phones, I think they are more towards the 180, 190 pound mark, maybe 160. And that you know, this is you know the the difference between a 100 pound phone, 150, and a 200 pound phone. Well, you know, if you look on Banggood and AliExpress and all this, you can see you get a lot more for your money just by paying an extra 20, 30 pounds, 40 pounds. This is one of the cheapest options out there as far as, you know, a decent budget Android phone. It does have some flaws. The cameras, you know, at the back, the back camera is actually okay during the daytime. Nighttime, both cameras are bad. Um, as I noted, I was calling this front camera five megapixels. I was saying it's five megapixels, but they state it's 30 megapixels. It wouldn't surprise me if this is a five megapixel sensor. And what they're doing is using software to try and boost it to 30 megapixels. And then they can call it a 30 megapixel camera. I suspect that's the case because the quality of this camera doesn't seem like a 30 megapixel camera. Um, and I realize there's other things in place as far as, you know, the quality of a camera as far as, you know, all these different things you need to consider. But I think that's a very basic sensor that's in the front camera. But it's, again, cheap phone. What do you expect? Audio, acceptable. I'm using that word again, but it is acceptable. Not the best speakers in the world, or best speaker in the world. Um, not the best through when you uh, use your headphones, which you can do on this phone. Um, but, you know, it's okay. It's, it really is okay, and I don't think, you know, anyone who's buying this phone would really complain about that. Performance is good. Apart from I'm noticing a little bit slow uh, responsive times when I'm typing. Apart from that, I'm happy with browsing. I'm happy with changing apps. I'm happy with navigating. I'm happy with games. I'm happy with watching YouTube. I'm just generally happy. But there are some concerns about um, there are some concerns about the quality 
of the build. Um, well, firstly, it's it's a it's a slippy phone. Secondly, you know, mine's came with smudges on the camera under the glass, so it means that I, I can't even take um, photos or videos really with the front camera unless I want black smudges on there. Um, that's just something I need to deal with. Uh, the provided cable is really poor, and as I pointed out, um, it's a little bit longer than many other micro uh, USB cables. So that's a bit of a pain in the ass as well. Um, it's good to throw in a screen protector. They didn't throw in a case. Ideally, you want to get a case for this phone. The back of this phone, I think, is gorgeous. But this thing is, I mean, it's glass. It's just super slippy. So it's a fantastic looking phone. It performs well. The cameras are at the lower end of the market, let's put it that way. Performance is okay. There's a few little annoyances. But, you know, as far as the essentials... Calls are fine. Call quality is fine. Uh, I don't have any problems with the microphone. I don't have any major problems with the speakers or anything like that. Uh, I noticed sometimes when I was, you know, when I went from uh, Wi-Fi to 4G, sometimes it was a little bit slow changing over. But that might have been my network as well. So I don't know about that. Overall, I think networks, 4Gs, it, it switches to 3G just like any other phone when you can get 4G. Um, all of that is fine. So overall, yes, it's perhaps a little bit flawed in some areas. But it's designed to be flawed. It's a budget phone. It is a budget phone. I've been unlucky with the front camera issue, but that aside, I think that this is worth the money. If I'm honest, it is. You know, it's an MP3 player. It's a podcast player. It's a YouTube player. You can browse the web. You can make calls. You can make text messages. Um, and instead of buying, you know, one iPhone, you could buy eight or nine of these. And, you know, again, I, I, I am emphasizing price over and over and over again. But you need to remember that. And, you know, it's all it's all good saying that, well, this Chinese phone is better. But if that Chinese phone is £200 or, you know, whatever in dollars, if that's twice the price as this, then of course those other phones are going to be better. You pay more, you get more, generally speaking. So overall, I actually think this is a decent little phone. If you're happy with, you know, just a basic phone, if cameras, you know, not having the best camera for videos and photos in them, uh, if you don't have to have the best camera in the market, if you just want a phone that works, but something that's modern that you can use WhatsApp with, with, you know, social media, with games, with videos, battery life is decent. It's a little bit slow charging, but overall, I think most people would be happy with the Uphone X, and I'll call it one more time, the Uli phone. I've got no idea what it's, you know, what the real name is, but there it is there. So many thanks uh, for watching the video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Please do refer to, excuse me, please do refer to my previous videos for the unboxing, for the video samples and my first impressions. Um, overall, I think this is a decent phone, guys. So I'm going to try some more Chinese phones in the market, but I don't think I've, I've done too bad with my first pick. So... As always, guys, hope you've enjoyed the video. Click the like button, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and please do leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this phone. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, especially if you have experience of, you know, you've got some experience with buying phones uh, from the Chinese market. So until next time, guys, take care.